Okay, hello students. Uh, this topic is on periprostatic joint infection, and this is a quite a big topic. We have individually in our app covered uh, into in three forms, prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. But uh, today I'll summarize this for you in this uh, lectures. So periprostatic joint infection, especially for hip and knee, is a very common cause for revision surgery. In fact, uh, knee, it is twice as common as hip joint, and knee, the top one, uh, is infection. But together, infective and non-infective uh, loosening of the implants are the most common, both for hip and knee replacement as a uh, for revision surgery. So why the periprostatic joint infection is so difficult to, to diagnose and treat, and we need to understand by this concept of biofilm, which means that normally if, if there is no implant and you got infection in a joint, the bacteria are lying in a free floating form, and this is called a planktonic bacteria, which is freely floating. And this can be easily attacked by uh, antibiotics, by antibodies, and by macrophages. But the, uh, the problem with the periprostatic uh, infection is as soon as you put an implant there, these start forming colonies. So they start adhering to the implant in the first steps, and then they start secreting a protective layer of glycolics or polysaccharide around them. And then inside, they start changing their phenotype and genotype so that they are more resistant for antibiotics. So they cannot be attacked by, um, by host uh, defense system and antibiotics. So very difficult to uh, treat. Also, there is a race uh, for these bacteria uh, with, uh, with the host tissue. So if there is a number of bacteria are less in number, then the host can easily uh, host tissue can easily attach to the implant initially with the fibrocyte and then if it is osteointegration with the uh, bone uh, forming a protective layer on the implants but if the if the bacteria number are many in number they will win the race so there's a race for the surface it's depend on whether bacteria winning or your own host tissue winning and upper our aim is for the host tissue to win and our aim is to decrease this number of bacteria in the blood so that they don't form the colony on the implant. And that's the aim of uh, prevention of the infection. So why this infection is so difficult to diagnose? Uh, the diagnosis is difficult because if you got a planktonic bacteria, it can be attacked by these antibodies, uh, sorry, antibiotics. This is your bacteria, or it can be attacked by antibodies. It can be attacked by macrophages. But once it forms the colony, uh, like this protective colony, then this reaction of, uh, of your host with the bacteria is not happening. So you don't produce many inflammatory markers like CRP, SR, not very high, so difficult to diagnose. Also, because it forms a colony and adherent to implant, it is if you aspirate this joint, then difficult to culture. So culture is difficult, and the and the symptoms and inflammatory markers are quite low. So it may not be easy to diagnose periprostatic infection because of this reason. Although this uh, bacteria in this biofilm keep on uh, damaging the peri implant tissue and keep on causing a septic loosening, and uh, eventually the implant will fail. So that's the problem with the periprostatic infection compared to your normal joint infection without any implant in it. So how do we can pre prevent this? Not a lot of time when you talk about prevention, a lot of people think is what we do in theater or just before theater, but actually the prevention starts the time the patient first consultation with you and it carries on in, in, even after the patient is discharged. So even five years down the line, uh, if the patient get a pneumonia, you have to prevent periprostatic infection by quickly treating that with a radical uh, treatment so that it doesn't bacteria doesn't uh, come and attach to the implant. So the uh, prevention is a long journey and let us go through this journey and see what are the factors we can make it better so that you don't get these periprostatic infections. So first stage of this is when the patient see you in the clinic and the preoperative, and then there's a perioperative phase, which means just when the patient is admitted uh, in the hospital, and then is a post-op uh, precaution you need to take. So what can you do in a 
pre-operative optimization, there are a number of factors which make you prone for uh, infection. And some of these are modifiable. Some of them, you can't modify them. And for this non-modifiable, all you can do is either cancel the surgery or tell the patient there's a high risk and he he's ready to take the risk. But the modifiable factor can be changed so that the risk of infection is less. So what we do is, as soon as the patients come to us in the preoperative, uh, in the clinic, uh, in outpatients, you divide these patients into these three groups. Are they from their uh, preoperative comorbidity, are they high risk, middle risk, or low risk? And we want to operate on this category. So if they are a middle risk and they are modifiable factor, we will wait and change them and make them low risk but if they are very high risk and we cannot change them, then this is the group where we will say we cannot operate. So cancel surgery for this. So what are the categories where you will should not be operating? Uh, and these are the high risk patients where you should cancel your surgery. If there is an active infection going on either in the joint or in the blood or local tissue anywhere, maybe in the urine, maybe in the um, in the in in the chest, maybe in the dental. So any active infection going on, uh, that should be a criteria to cancel that operation till that is cured. So what about the other modifiable factors?